This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The next four days are going to be awesome. Friday, we got the women's final four. Saturday, the men's final four. Sunday, the women's championship. And then Monday, the men finish things off to round out this tournament season. Here to break it all down and preview the final fours for both the men's and the women's tournaments is Dr. Ed Fang. We're going to talk to Ed, get his read on the women's side of things, talk about that UConn versus Iowa matchup, break down the men's side, and let you know where Ed is seeing value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the Facebook. FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Saunas. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Dr. Ed Feng. Find his work at thepowerrank.com. Check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank as well. Ed, it is a delight to get you back on the show here today. How you doing? I'm doing great. Really looking forward to the Final Four and some uh, pretty awesome basketball action. And uh, yeah. We'll see, uh, you know, we got UConn on both sides, and I think they're an interesting team to talk about. NC State on both sides, too. So it's uh, going to be a pretty fun Final Four to discuss, but I have not talked to you since the brackets came out. We had that show on Monday after that, but uh, how's the tourney been for you so far? The tourney's been good. Uh, I mean, I've been more kind of invested in, in props that I've been giving out to my members, and those have been going pretty well. So pretty happy about that. Uh, as far as the bracket stuff goes, I mean, obviously UConn was kind of your small pool favorites, chalky thing, and and that's looked pretty good so far. Uh, I think their biggest, uh, you know, their biggest enemy is complacency. Um, and it, it, you know, it'll be interesting with the men, uh, just because, like, look, if they if they really have to beat Alabama and North Carolina, uh, yeah, I mean, NC State to win the championship. I mean, clearly they are dynasty. They won back to back, but I would be very disappointed if that were actually the case. I want to see them play at least a Purdue. Right. Um, So, uh, but, but I I don't know. I guess, I guess playing NC state would be good for brackets. Yeah. Uh, some big spreads for both the men's games. We'll talk about those in a second. But first, we'll talk to Ed about his thoughts on the women's tournament and get you ready for Friday here on the show. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere else you find your podcasts. Just search for Covering the Spread. Hit subscribe. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You can also find this show every weekday on the FanDuel YouTube page, and on FanDuel TV Plus. If your bracket is busted, don't sweat it because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting on an upset, trying to bet on a total, anything like that. Time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets. Your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 if your first $5 bet wins. You can bet on spreads, money lines, totals, whatever it may be, just visit FanDuel.com and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets for good. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Over to FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700. Visit chaosgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. And let's begin things here by talking about the women's side of things, which begins on Friday night with the two final four games there. You said you've been building out numbers for the women's tournament. So I know you've done numbers based stuff for a lot of different sports. Uh, so I'm sure you have the process pretty refined by now. But what did that process look like specifically for women's college basketball? 
I think for every sport, you have to do what's necessary. It, you know, it, in some sense, is not uh, there, there's not a ton of women's college basketball analytics out there. Her hoop stats does some really nice stuff. I've tried to feature their work in my newsletter. I think they do a really good job. Uh, but you know, a lot of their stuff is behind a paywall, and and for good reason. Um, you know, they're trying to build a business over there. I've been getting more interested in, in women's college basketball. I, I think there have been a number of exciting matchups over the last couple of years that have, have really caught the interest. Uh, the Supposedly, ESPN ratings have been up 100% this year over last year, which is, is pretty good. And I, I think it's because the games are, are pretty good, and it's pretty yeah. good basketball. So I, I, I did this mostly because I cared, and I wanted to have some numbers. And I basically applied my ranking algorithm and made some team rankings. This is what I do on the site. This is what uh, most of the public rankings on my site that you can check out are based on. I take margin of victory in every game and I uh, adjust for schedule with, with my algorithm. And so the strength of this is it's gonna be able to you know look at women's basketball and see that, oh, okay, well you, you played in a good conference and so you're gonna get bumped up a little bit. Um, this other team didn't so much and, and they might get moved down a little bit. And, you know, it's been a really uh, it's, it's been an interesting tool. I'm really looking forward to kind of digging in more uh, next season when there's more teams to kind of think about. Right now we have four, eight, you know, eight when I started uh, messing with this on Monday. And it was a matter of scraping together just the score results and having that database and then applying code that I've had around for a while. So pretty simple process. And uh, yeah, excited to kind of think about it some more and, and look at the predictions. It's very relatable to be like, I enjoyed watching this, so I built a model around it. That's the reason I have an F1 model is because I was watching Drive to Survive with my wife and was like, hey, this might be fun to bet on. And, you know, you kind of want a rooting interest in some of these things. And so it's a very relatable experience to hear you say that was the reason why you did it. And like watching the games on Monday, they were insanely hyped and then they lived up to it. So I feel like that's mm -hmm. why it's got this appeal where it's not just yeah. like, okay, we know people want this, but also like I'm just objectively enjoying it. And I kind of want to be more informed as a viewer as right. I tune in. Exactly. I feel the exact same way. Iowa LSU got all the headlines on Monday night and for good reason with uh, the matchups and just the rematch of the title game. Uh, UConn USC was a better basketball game. It was yeah. an incredible basketball game. And um, I like I actually couldn't turn it off. I wanted to go to bed, but right I didn't. <laughs> until they finally pulled away. I think I I think I turned it off for like a minute to go or something like that. But it was just really good basketball. The UConn women play about six players, and it's kind of a problem when three of those players have two fouls in the first half. Right. Um, and you know you kind of have to adjust to that. Uh, yeah, it was great. I mean, it was it was great. Yeah, a lot of fun. So let's talk about both those games. Starting things off with the first game on Friday night, that is NC State taking on South Carolina. South Carolina still undefeated. They are an 11 and a half point favorite here. And obviously with all the, the talk around Caitlin Clark, Paige Beckers, Juju Watkins, etc., haven't talked a lot about the team that's been the favorite to win for pretty much the entire year. So South Carolina, 11 and a half point favorite here, Ed. What are your numbers saying about this one? Right. So, I mean, I have South Carolina by about nine and a half. Uh, I'm not suggesting going out and betting NC State. And, uh, you know, South Carolina has certainly been the best team. They're undefeated uh, in my numbers. They are six points clear of the second best team, uh, which is Iowa. So, you know, I, I, any way you put it, like this team is is the best in the nation. It's a little bit of a surprise. Uh, I was talking to Aaron Bar Barzilai this morning. He runs he her hoop stats. And he made the point that this South Carolina team isn't as good as the one last year. Like the one last year was was rated even higher than the one this year. They That version of the South Carolina team lost to Iowa in the Final Four. They lost, I think, four of their top contributors on that team last year. They came into the season... Uh, they were actually only sixth in the preseason AP poll, still very solid, but they weren't first. Uh, you know, LSU was first, and and I think there's a little bit of recency bias there because they were, you know, they were uh, they had just won a national championship. Uh, and actually, you I think UConn was second, but they were sixth, right? So this is a little bit unexpected that this South Carolina team has done this well, even if it's not quite as good as what the team last year has done. 
Um, so is there a little chink in the armor? I don't know. Maybe uh, they do shoot almost 40% from three on offense. Uh, that is very good and possibly unsustainably good. So uh, that might be something to, to look out for if they can continue to shoot that well. Uh, but clearly the best team, I think it's a testament to Dawn Staley, who has done a great job and really has built a powerhouse program. We actually talked here in Ann Arbor a couple weeks ago about her uh, possibly taking the, the men's basketball job. Um, it was never going to happen, but it was fun to talk about. And I think it just shows you the type of respect that she demands in the basketball world, whether it's women or men. She's done an incredible job with this team. Fully expect them to, to win this game and then uh, get, get, a, get a little more competition in the final. Now, you referenced the preseason rankings, and you've done a lot of research on the men's side that has shown that those are predictive when it comes to tourney time because it shows talent. And obviously, it's tough to say, hey, Ed, go back and look. Is this predictive on the women's side, too? But is that something you care about? Is that something you you factor in as like a factor in your mind when looking at these games? The fact that, you know, UConn is highly rated coming in. South Carolina, in this game, maybe not as highly rated there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. I definitely consider it, um, you know, and, and I try to say, you know, this might be the, this might be the chink in the armor. They're, they're probably not as talented as the team they had a year ago. Um, so definitely something I consider. I mean, we know the wisdom of crowds works pretty well. Like I haven't gone back and checked how well, um, you know, that model is done and predicting tournament winners, but my guess is that it would do pretty well. Okay, so Ed is showing some value in NC State, but not leaping to take it, at least as of right now. Let's talk about the second game here. Of course, this is the big one. It is UConn taking on Iowa right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Iowa favored by two and a half. So pretty tight spread here. Any value stand out to you in this game, Ed? Yeah, I like UConn. So uh, I was working on my newsletter last year, and I wanted to put something about the you know the women and, and the tournament. And uh, I... I go over and I look at her hoop stat and they have, you know, I think they had UConn third behind uh, South Carolina and then Iowa. And I was like, Oh, great. Right. And you go and look at the markets and it was, it was kind of interesting by, by the time the newsletter came out on, you know, I wrote it on Friday and UConn was like 12 to one to win. And that just seemed off. Um, especially since South Carolina's on the other side of the bracket. So they couldn't meet until the final. And then, you know, South Carolina and, I guess South Carolina moved on. So that by the time I wrote, by the time the newsletter got published, you know, they were up to like 16 or 17 to one. And I was like, ah, oh, this is fantastic. You know, I felt pretty good that they were going to take care of business against Duke. And um, yeah. So anyways, I bet that I put it in the newsletter. I bet it. I was pretty excited about it because I thought there were pretty good odds. And then Monday, so they beat Duke. Uh, I don't think they look great, but they kind of pulled away uh, from, from that Duke team. And then Monday I started running my own numbers. And when, when I did that, like, I was like, oh crap. Like, you know, they were they were. I think they were sixth. Right. And so my strength of schedule adjustment said that, okay, maybe UConn wasn't as good as, um, you know, at least her hoop stat had those women. Part of the, part of the, uh, the markets really liked uh, UConn against USC. I think they were a two and a half or three and a half point favorite. So that was good. I had, you know, UConn by like a point or something like that. And I think part of the story there is just the trajectory of the team. You know, they were very highly considered in the preseason. They lost uh, one of the top players uh, to injury. They've had a bunch of other injuries to that team. Most of their losses happened earlier in the season. So um, when I was running the numbers, I kind of ran everything at the end of every month just to check, make sure what was going on. And what you've seen is UConn go from the teens up to sixth on Monday and now up to fifth. So my numbers do like UConn. They do see the strength. Um, they may be underestimating them a little bit uh, in the sense that this team might be playing better now than they were uh, a couple months ago. Paige Beckers is definitely the star. And we have to remember two years ago, she was a much more uh, – well-regarded name than Caitlin Clark, right? She tore ACL, wasn't able to play last season, has been working her way back this season. Um, and and I and I think she's probably gotten better as she's played more games. She's averaging about 21 and a half points per game, which is not super impressive. But, uh, you know, when you look at her points prop, it's like 26 and a half. And that kind of makes sense. 
so with UConn, uh, they, I, I've I've watched some UConn games right in the past, right? Because it's you know Ariama and you, yeah. you know you see kind of you see them in Final Four in the national championship game, and you, from what I remember, like they're always big, they're always athletic, and they're always well coached. And from watching two games of this UConn team, like there's there's no difference. They're big, they're athletic, and they're well coached. Um, Iowa, on the other hand, we we all know about Caitlin Clark; she's amazing, um, but. You know, they're not the best on defense. There were parts of that LSU game where <laughs> it was there, they, both teams were scoring essentially on every single possession. Uh, when you look at some of the stuff that her hoops dad is doing, uh, you know, Iowa's defense, I think, is in the 20s. Definitely the best offense in the nation. So, anyways, my number makes uh, Iowa a one point favorite in this. I, I do think there's value in UConn. I mean, I haven't personally bet it because I do have that future. I think I probably will. Uh, I like UConn plus two and a half. I think this is going to be super tight, super amazing game. I simply think, I, I think UConn's just good enough on defense. Um, you know, Caitlin Clark was able to get a lot of shots off against LSU because they had a five, seven guard trying to guard her and she just shot over her. And this made no sense at all. Uh, she won't, Caitlin Clark won't have the same ease uh, against UConn because their guards are taller. And, and I think UConn plays better defense. So I, I do like UConn here. There's four games on Friday and Saturday for the semifinals of, of these college basketball tournaments. This is by far the best matchup. Yeah. By far. Yeah. So this late game on – oh, it's, it starts at 8.30. Great. I should maybe get to sleep after that. Um, well, it's 9.30 Eastern. It's I got the game. central time. Oh, right central. There. Dang Sorry. it, Jim. <laughs> I got your Man, hopes up. you're messing with me. I got super excited there. Yep, I got your hopes up. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but the UConn team is fascinating because we had Justin Carter uh, who does write for her hoop stats on uh, before the tournament. And he was talking about how they were like the toughest team for him to figure out because right. they were well rated by her hoop stats. Uh, Massey Peabody, I know had them. I think they were two entering the tournament, like number two overall entering the tournament. But what had happened was when they faced good teams, they got crushed the entire regular season. So there was this, this dynamic of the numbers love them but they keep getting destroyed by good teams. But then you watch them that USC game and USC was a one seed. They're a good team. They look really good there. So I think that it kind of alleviates those concerns about what they've done against high level competition and says, okay, this team's legit. And I feel like that allows you to have more faith in your numbers. And if your numbers say I will buy one, I feel like that's got to give you some confidence given that it's possible your numbers may be selling UConn a bit short even. Yeah, I, I read Justin's preview before the the Elite yeah. Eight, and uh, I was I was looking at that, and I think a lot of those games happened earlier in the year, right? So they're uh, adjusting to the injury injuries, basically. I, I think they're adjusting to who they have, and they yeah. know they have six players, and they're probably not going to run and gun simply because there's not a lot of subs, and right. you know those women are going to play a lot of minutes, and they've adjusted to that. You know, on on a per possession basis. I mean, this team looks legit. I mean, they play great basketball. All right. Ed likes UConn plus two and a half taking on Iowa for that banger of a game on Friday night. Let's flip over to the men's side here and talk about uh, the first game on Saturday night. That is going to be a pretty fun one. Got NC State taking on Purdue. NC State trying to keep that Cinderella run going. Zach Eady and Purdue, nine and a half point favorites here. Ed, what are your numbers saying about this game? Can NC State keep that Cinderella run going? <laughs> so NC State is fascinating because they have uh, been on this run. But uh, I did some work on upsets. Uh you know, uh, a couple years ago. And what I found is that when teams have upsets, like you're getting some positive variance, both on three point offense and three point defense, the three point defense is certainly what is happening for NC state here. If you go, um, I think they lost the last five games of the regular season. If you look at the start of the, uh, the ACC tournament, they won five straight games to win that another four straight games in the NCAA tournament, they're uh, allowing 28.3% from three. I mean, that's like Houston level, like defense, right? And this is just not a team that should sustain that. Um, also, if you take out the Louisville game, which is the first one out of there, it goes and Louisville made over half their threes. Uh, that drops 26.2%. So 26.2% in the last eight games. 
it's it's just it's just unsustainable. Um, just a quick note, like you know, I've been doing a lot of these, uh, you know, what like just to just to kind of estimate what has been going on more recently with either teams or players, and I've been trying really hard to like not knit not like cherry pick where I start like looking yeah. at these numbers. So I definitely wanted to say, okay, let's start at the beginning of the ACC tournament and not just throw out the Louisville game, right? Like I'm trying to say, okay, let's look at 10 games because I don't want to bias like where I stop looking at stuff to to get um you know particular numbers that I that I want to pull out. So uh but you know I think the end of the regular season is a good demarcation point. Like the start of conference play is a good good place to start looking at whether a player's stats have changed. Um, and, you know, I think in general, when you're analyzing stuff, you want to do that as opposed to say, oh, well, this guy has been great for 12.69 games, right? Right. And not any good before that, right? Because <laughs> you're cherry picking a little bit. So my uh, my model has this game as Purdue by 11. I, I think there's value against, uh, uh, against NC State. Um, I thought there was value uh, with Duke in the semifinal in, in the elite eight was massively wrong on that. I think there's value for Purdue here. Um, I think they do win. I think, I think there should be at least a double digit spread. We'll see if it gets there. Uh, but, uh, I think Purdue does move on unless something crazy happens. Now we've talked a lot about three point defense before and how the, having a lower three point percentage against in terms of like actual shots made, it can be kind of fluky. Whereas it's preventing three pointers right. from being taken. That's a more sticky thing. And I feel like for NC state, you're looking at a nine game sample there. I feel like we can disregard three or we can downplay three point defense across an entire season. So when it's three point defense across a nine game sample, which is even smaller. I feel like that has to make you feel even better about the idea of regression coming towards this team and that they're yeah. not being especially skilled at somehow making three pointers, you know, or at, at three point defense. Yeah. I don't think they're particularly skilled at three point defense. Uh, and you know, I mean, does that mean Purdue's going to shoot great? No. Uh, Purdue is also like, by, I think they're, if not the best, they're definitely one of the best in terms of making three pointers. Um, that that has definitely been uh, something that they've been particularly good at. I know at one point they were over 40%, which is in, incredible. You expect a little bit of regression there um, as well. So, but, you know, I mean, even if they hit 38, 39, 37%, um, they should, you know, they should be able, they should be able to win this game. Uh, yeah. This is, this is like, you know, North Carolina state is, is a pretty big Cinderella and uh, it should end here. Well, Zach Eady against DJ Burns will be fun regardless. And Ed does be. like will Purdue be. minus nine and a half. Second game of the night is Alabama taking on UConn. And UConn has steamrolled so far. So they're favored by 11 and a half in this one, Ed. What are you seeing in this one with UConn being a heavy favorite? Right. My numbers have UConn by 11. Um, it's, it's just, you know, like I wrote before the start of the tournament, it's just really hard to poke holes at this UConn team like they're really good they're really good on both sides of the ball you look at the four fact four factors on offense shooting rebounding turnovers you know preventing turnovers and um getting the line like they're good at everything like they're I, I think they're top 50 and everything so they're really good on defense uh when you look at Alabama's implied team total it's uh it's 19 percent below their season average so that's how much respect the markets are giving towards UConn's defense. Um, look, I mean, UConn's been so dominant, right? Like, it, it, it even if it's the Final Four, you kind of worry about, you know, possibly a letdown. I kind of doubt it. They really have some good players. Donovan Klingon's been amazing. Um, I mean, they're, they they just they figured out a way to play really well. Um, Dan Hurley's done a great job there. Alabama is a good team on offense. They shoot a lot of threes. And so there's, 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 there's certainly a path for them to, to pull this upset, but they are not very strong on, on defense. And this has definitely been the knock on them. And it, it's somewhat hilarious that Nate Oates had the best team in college basketball a year ago, had top NBA prospect, Brandon Miller. That was a team that was really good on the defensive side of the ball. And they lose in the round of 32 and, this year, you come into the tournament, eh, Alabama doesn't play any defense. And here they are in the final four. Right. Crazy. But, how that yeah. I, 
I mean, I, I don't really have an opinion on the spread. I mean, yeah. um, I, I wouldn't necessarily bet the spread, but, uh, but I think UConn moves on and uh, hopefully we get a UConn Purdue final that I think should be pretty entertaining with uh, Donovan Klingon versus Zach ED. That'll be good. If we do get that matchup, FanDuel Sportsbook does have hypothetical lines posted. Uh, that one would be uh, UConn by five and a half if they were to face Purdue. And I don't know if you got a chance to look at these, Ed, but uh, any thoughts on the hypothetical lines posted over FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, I'd make it about four. UConn okay. minus four. I, I have okay. zero interest in betting against UConn. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> oh, my God. 15 and a half against NC State. Yeah. <laughs> NC State Alabama's four and a half. There we go. That's a that's a tight one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, if Al if Alabama, you know, I mean, it was it was kind of interesting watching that bracket, right? Like because yeah. Alabama was not favored. I mean, they weren't favored to beat UNC in the in the Sweet Sixteen, right? Right. They 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 win that game, and then they're favored against Clemson to make a Final Four, and then and they got the job done. So basketball is funny, and. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for Nate Oates, so I think he's yeah. done a great job down there. You know, you, you don't think of Alabama as a basketball school by any stretch, but he he builds competitive teams every year. And this is this yeah. year is the is the best example of that yet. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So Ed is liking on the women's side, UConn plus two and a half taking on Iowa, and then the men's side, Purdue minus nine and a half uh for their matchup with NC State. That's all that we have here for today on covering the spread. But Ed, you've been busy over at the power rank. Hopefully a break for you coming up soon. But what's going on for you at the power rank and on the football analytics show? I had a great conversation with Aaron Bar Barzilai. Uh he is the founder of Her Hoop Stats. We talked about the women's Final Four. We actually spent more time talking about his story. Uh, he's MIT grad, Stanford grad. Cool. Uh, he worked for the Philadelphia 76ers. He was the director of analytics there. Uh, worked for a number of different NBA teams. So we talked about that, and then we talked about uh, a lot of other things as well. So that was a great conversation. Uh, it is up at the Football Analytics Show podcast. And then I'm writing my newsletter. Um, we'll have another five nuggets Saturday uh, where if you're looking to get some action down on the weekend, uh, that is a free resource for you. It gives you a chance to check out some of my work. So you can check that out at thepowerrank.com. Did you overlap with Aaron at Stanford at all or no? I think maybe a year. He was there before me. Okay. We certainly didn't nice. know each other there. Yeah, that's cool. Well, check that out yeah. on the Football Analytics Show. Sign up for the newsletter over at thepowerrank.com as well and find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also follow FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow we're talking some baseball. We're talking... EPL. Uh, we're going to talk some NASCAR as well. And of course, uh, talking about some the national championship on Monday. So make sure to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to your bets across tonight and enjoy the final four this weekend. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.